How many of you are happy tonight? Tonight you're going to have to determine to stay in your sin. I'm serious. You're going to have to actually make a choice in these next 10 minutes to stay a slave. The Lord is in the room. And I'm not preaching a distant Jesus tonight. I'm preaching a Jesus who is closer than the air we're breathing. Now, wonderful Holy Spirit, I thank you in advance for saving people. Thank you for saving children, Lord, again. We, I am not preaching a Jesus who is so distant. He is enthroned above the highest heaven, the Scripture said. But Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20, If two or three would gather in my name, I am there, even in the midst of you. So for a moment, I would like you to ponder that amazing truth that Jesus himself is in the room. How close is he? Even in the midst of us. He's closer to the, than the person to your right, to your left. He's closer than the air you breathe. And so over the next few minutes, I'm not going to ask you to make a choice between your life and Christianity. I'm going to ask you to make a choice between your life and Jesus himself. I'm going to ask you to make a choice between your sin and Jesus himself. Not my sermon, not what I'm talking about. I'm not preaching a system right now. I'm preaching a person to you who is in the room. He is right here among us and I, I want you to hear of his wonderful heart in Luke 19 verse 1. The scripture says Jesus entered and passed through Jericho and now behold there was a man named Zacchaeus. This is Luke 19 who was chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not see because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. What a heart Jesus has. Jesus was not afraid to stay at a chief tax collector's house who was a chief trader. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I'll restore it fourfold. That's called restitution and repentance, by the way. Verse 9, And Jesus said to him, Today, today, salvation has come to this house. Because he also is a son of Abraham. Listen carefully now. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Friends, it is, Jesus has made it quite simple to determine whether or not you belong to him. It's very simple. Have you been completely transformed by Jesus himself? Are you free from sin? Is the Lord the life in your veins? Is He actually living His life through you? 
Jesus said, he who sins is a slave to sin. A lifestyle of sin is not natural to somebody who's born again. It's not natural, and this is why you hear this every week. This is why Jesus does not change our life when we're saved. He replaces our life. That's way better. It's way better. A changed Michael is still hell bound. An improved Michael is still hell bound because God is perfect. But the Lord does something much more beautiful. This cross, the reason this is up here every week, is to remind us of the glorious sacrifice, the blood of Jesus that poured down this cross. And to those who come to Him in faith, they die with Him. And they're buried with Him. And they're raised with Him. So what I'm not asking you tonight is if your life has gotten a little better since you filled out a decision card. There's nothing wrong with decision cards. We use them, but the Scripture doesn't say, for God so loved the world, He sent a decision card. It doesn't. Many come to altars, but they never meet Jesus. Altars don't save. Only Jesus saves. You say, man, I prayed the prayer. Prayers don't save either. Only Jesus saves. You say, I read the gospel track. There wasn't a gospel track in the manger. You have to come to the person. Simeon said, when he held baby Jesus, this is what he said, as he's holding the person, he said, my eyes have seen your salvation. Salvation is not a system. Salvation is not a 12-step process. Salvation is not a method. Salvation is a person. Salvation has eyes of fire. That's why he said at the tomb of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. He's saying, I'm not just going to raise you. I'm going to keep you alive as your life. I'll raise you and sustain you. There's no one like Jesus. And I want to tell you unequivocally tonight, that you don't have to leave the same. You do not have to leave the same. If you believe that you have to be bound your entire Christian life, friends, with all the love of my heart, I'm telling you, you believe the lie from the pit of hell. A great man once said, if I have to wait until I'm dead to be free from sin, then death is my Savior and Jesus is not. Jesus destroys chains. It's what He does. He can set you free tonight. His presence is real. He is here in the room. Tomorrow is not promised. You say, are you begging me to come to Jesus? I am begging you to come to Jesus. There is no one like Him. Children, listen to me. Listen to me. If you're here tonight and you can understand what I'm saying, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to come give your life to Jesus. And I want you to look your mom and dad in the eye and say, Mom, I want to go give my life to the Lord. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and eye closed, you say, Michael, I really want to give my life to the Lord. I really want to yield my life. I want Jesus to live through me. I want to be free from sin. I want to know what it's like to be forgiven and truly, truly be free. I want you to lift your hand right now. You say, That's, well, thank you, God. I'd like all of us to stand. Many, many people are giving their lives to the Lord. Listen, I'd like all of us to stand. And this is what I want you to do. If you brought someone tonight that you think may need the Lord, I want you to look them in the eye right now as their friend. You brought them here for this moment. I want you to look them in the eye and do the work of an evangelist and say, look, do you need to get down there? I'll take you. If you raised your hand or you wish you did, I want you to come down to the altar right now and spread out as you come. Come on, come down. Come down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come, come. Come give your life to the Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on, come give your life to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Children, children, if you want to give your life to Jesus tonight, tonight is your night to come yield your life to the Lord Himself. 
Look at these little children. Look at this little girl. Come, sweetie. Come, 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 come. Oh, come on. Give the Lord praise. Come. Come to the Lord. Come, ma'am. Come. Come give your life to Jesus. Oh, all of heaven is rejoicing. All of heaven is rejoicing. All of heaven is rejoicing. We're still coming. Little children. Oh, touch our children. Touch our children. Come give your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. You can't pray on earth as it is in heaven and not rejoice when people give their life to the Lord. Come on. Look at these children. Hallelujah. I love it when the Holy Spirit beats us to the punch. Is this your boy? Is this your boy, Amy? Is this your boy, Joe? Your daughter. Wow, Amy's on our staff. Thank you, Father. For all of you who came forward, I'd like us in our seats to remain standing in honor of what's going on right now.